Minecraft is a game that is near and dear to my heart. I honestly don't know if I'd even be a dev if it wasn't for the time I spent hosting servers and playing around with Minecraft back when I was in high school. I certainly wouldn't have ended up working at Twitch. But we're not talking about my history with Minecraft today. We have something much more interesting to cover. What if Minecraft wasn't so slow. And no, I don't mean the bedrock rewrite Microsoft did in C++. That thing's a mess. Not only is it not better performance-wise, it's also riddled with bugs and weird behaviors, and it's just, it's not the same game. Today, we're talking about the Java version of Minecraft and the hosting of Java Minecraft servers, because it's not great. I'm surprised, because I remember back in the day, all the things we were trying to do to optimize Minecraft server hosting. I thought it would be better by now, but it's just gotten worse. There's many new server clients you can use to host Minecraft servers, many of which are open source. Almost all of them are written in Java though. And as such, the things they offer are more APIs and plugins and less performance and hosting wins. Until now, because I just learned about a really fun new project named Pumpkin. And man, the numbers, they're kind of nuts. We're talking about a reduction from two gigs of RAM and 24% CPU usage with 10 players to 27 megabytes of RAM and 1.5% CPU usage. There's almost a 100x reduction in memory usage and a 20x reduction in CPU usage in a lot of these scenarios. Of course, to get there, you're not doing this in Java. This is a Rust rewrite, which is really cool. But there are some gotchas. This whole project's really cool and I can't wait to tell you guys more about it right after a word from today's sponsor, Blacksmith. If you're already a Rust dev, you probably know that as fast as the language is, the compiler is a bit less so. Many Rust projects and things in other languages too are very slow to compile, especially when you throw them on GitHub Actions. What if GitHub Actions were fast though, and also way cheaper? That's where Blacksmith comes in. I could show you their homepage, but instead I'm gonna show you this. This is a pull request for Tokyo, you know, Tokyo, that one, the one prime shouts. Tokyo is not fast to build. It takes upwards of six minutes and 12 seconds to do those builds. When you compare that to the 2V CPU, which is roughly equivalent blacksmith box, you end up with build times that are almost half as long, three minutes and 51 seconds. But if you upgrade, you splurge a little, you go for that four CPU box, two minutes, 47 seconds, literally less than half as much time. And it's not like they're gonna charge a whole lot more either. They're actually cheaper. In this instance, the GitHub Action one cost about six cents, and these other ones cost less than two. That's a pretty sizable gap. This tagline sounds like clickbait, but it's not. It's literally as simple as swapping out the runs on in your config and running it. You get a ton of free minutes every month, the price is insane, and it works on real projects. Node takes almost half as much time and costs about a third as much money to compile using Blacksmith. If you're working on real projects and the build times have gotten really slow, you should give Blacksmith a shot. Check them out today at soydev.link slash blacksmith. So we need to dive into the catches because this just sounds too good to be true. The first thing that we should acknowledge is that this is not the first time. Someone sent me this beautiful website, days since last Rust Minecraft server. It has been 37 days since the last release of a Minecraft server software written in Rust, which was Ferrum C, which I haven't even had a chance to look at yet. Ferrum C is another high-performant Minecraft server implementation created in Rust for unparalleled speed and efficiency. Apparently, they're going through a rewrite of it right now. <laughs> it's highly efficient. They're showing crazy usage here. It can import existing words, worlds from vanilla. This one seems further along than I would have expected. But as mentioned, this isn't the only one. We've had a couple. We've had a number of them. The first was Feather in 2019. Then we had MCHPRS in June. Soon after, Graphite followed, then Valence, not long after. Then we had an almost two-year break before Hyperion dropped. This one's still being maintained. Oh, look at that. Still getting commits an hour ago. They're still working on it. That's really good to see. And here they have a list of all the features that are supported. There's a couple that are missing from all of these, some of which are easy to implement, many of which are not. But we're not talking about these ones today. We're talking about the one I am most excited about right now which is Pumpkin. Pumpkin is a Minecraft server built entirely in Rust, which offers a fast, efficient, and customizable experience. It prioritizes performance and player enjoyment while adhering to the core mechanics of the game. There are things they're explicitly not trying to do though, which is gonna make it a huge turnoff for a lot of people watching. But for me, it's honestly kind of exciting. Obviously they say what they are trying to do, security, compatibility, performance, whatnot. The important piece is here, what they will not do. 
They have no intentions to be compatible with plugins or mods for other servers, so don't expect your old craft bucket plugins or your fabric stuff to work here. They also explicitly don't want this to be the base point for someone else to go make their own framework for building Minecraft servers from. This isn't meant to be a starting point for you to go build your own version of craft bucket. It's meant to be its own all in one thing. Here's the list of features they are and aren't supporting. I am surprised how far they've gotten along here. The biggest missing thing for sure is world borders and world saving are both missing. Kind of a big deal. This is some feedback that the dev responded to that I thought was really interesting. Performance differences look impressive from the benchmarks. I do notice that world gen and saving is missing though, and these tend to be pretty expensive operations. Chunk gen especially can bring a weaker VPS to its knees. I'm sure the benchmarks were taken at an idle state, but I'd be curious to see how it compares once those features are included. Also an important detail here, this is the one I thought was really fun. Light recalculation. The way lighting works in Minecraft is server side. <laughs> The replies from Alex are fun here. I'm impressed with the benchmarks myself. Block placing and breaking is already supported, but light currently doesn't or isn't, so everything is dark. We're working on it. We want to add all the cool features like scoreboards and teams, and we already have an API which is similar to use like Brigadier for our commands. We'd like to give players on low-end hardware the possibility to host servers. I think I may test Pumpkin on a Raspberry Pi or something one day. Very exciting stuff. The lighting thing is hilarious though, that the lighting for blocks and knowing which light to apply to which blocks is a thing the server does. So when you make changes to the world, like moving blocks that has to be recalculated and the rest implementation is not doing that yet. It is also worth noting that the actual Minecraft server standard isn't an open thing. We don't have the source code for the official Java Minecraft server. We've been reverse engineering it now for over a decade. So the effort going on here is a best faith attempt at recreating the API, largely based on the recreations others have made in Java in order to try and get every feature and every API request response that the Minecraft server expects handled much more efficiently. I kind of want to run it locally, but I'm lazy, so I'm not going to. Eh, fuck it. I want to too badly. I have Rust set up. I might as well, right? After a quick update of Rust locally, this is actually surprisingly easy to run. If you have Rust set up and on a somewhat recent version, it's literally as simple as cloning the repo and then cargo run dash dash release. It also spun up decently fast. I'm excited to give this a shot though. Open it up. Why is Minecraft itself less stable than the Rust-based rewrite of the server? Why is launching Minecraft the hard part? Tisk tisk. Multiplayer. Add server. Done. I want to see activity monitor quick. Can I not make it smaller than that? That's annoying. I wish I could play on a different computer more easily so I could just see it hosting and see what the performance is like without Minecraft itself eating so much of my like usage. But we can see here pumpkin using 200 megs of RAM. <laughs> oh no. It's actually not that bad considering everything is doing. I wonder if I close the game. Oh no, I closed the server accidentally. That's going to kill the game. Um, disconnected. At least I'm disconnected now. So now if I check utilization, can I find pumpkin again? Cool. Yeah. When I'm not in the server, it's using four megs of RAM. 0% CPU. Let's connect and see how it bumps. 0.01% CPU. It's working so hard. Okay, it spikes when it's doing the gen steps. There's only a bit of lag in some of the gen. But then it drops right back down. And if I leave, yeah, it goes to nothing. I think I actually went there before I left. You can see the lighting issues though, because as they mentioned, it doesn't know how to light stuff. Fuck, I forgot the hotkey to start flying again. I haven't played or creative in so long. Yeah, so you can see how broken the lighting is because lighting is hard. But it works. And its resource utilization is kind of insane. 
Yeah. Minus the, the lighting being entirely broken. I'm impressed. Like, it's running and it's running well. Its usage of RAM is hilariously low. I'm so used to spinning up like 8 gigs of RAM or more for a Minecraft server with any actual usage in it, especially once you get plugins and shit involved. The fact that idle, it's using nothing is insane. I've never seen a Minecraft server idle with so little resources. This is legit. I'm actually very excited to see where things end up with this project. Man, the efforts to reverse engineer Minecraft are nuts. There's this page that is the protocol for the Minecraft Java edition, which is their best attempt to reverse engineer everything the server does and everything the client asks for. See how many points there are in this? They have to re-implement all of this shit from the data types that are going to be used in these to the various different actual like request types that exist. Like set block destroy stage, because blocks are destroyed in multiple stages. Block updates, boss bars, change difficulty calls, like all of these things are different functionalities that the server has to re-implement. It's kind of nuts. It's kind of insane. Interesting comment in chat. Microsoft isn't gonna care. The C++ rewrite they use is light years ahead of Java edition. No, no, it is not. No. <laughs> As someone who's played a lot of Bedrock Edition, this is actually delusion. I, I wish that was the case, but it is not the case. One thing I have heard is particularly rough with these rewrites, and as far as I know, none of them have figured it out, is Redstone and the program command block. The idea that if you didn't know this, you can basically write code in Minecraft by using logic gates and all of these crazy things with Redstone. When you're running Minecraft on a server, the server needs to do all of those things. If you didn't already know about how Minecraft runs, even in single player, it's technically a server. The single player instance used to be its own fully separate thing, but at some point, I think it was when they went from alpha to beta, it might have been a little after that, they made a change where Minecraft always runs in server mode. So when you play single player, it's effectively spinning up a server just for you on your device that you're playing within, which means that the Minecraft server is what runs all of this logic. All of the redstone behaviors and commands are running on the server binary, which means they have to be re-implemented when you do this re-implementation. Thank you, chat, for the clarification. 1.3 is the version where that happened. Multi-threaded Minecraft server built for redstone. Interesting, there's one of these high-performance servers for Minecraft is actually built specifically for Redstone. Each 257 256 plot runs on a separate thread, which allows for less lag, more concurrency, and many awesome extra features. This is nuts. So just for context, for those who aren't familiar with how crazy the things are that people make in Minecraft, Hello here again, is everyone. somebody who rebuilt the entirety of Pokemon Red and Blue in Minecraft using Redstone. So re-implemented the entire cartridge and the Game Boy so that you could play Pokemon in Minecraft. Uh, God, the fucking, this deserves a video of its own, but just like the, the amount of command blocks in Redstone it took, like it just, it breaks rasterization and rendering in the game. This is all of the, the code that runs the game. All command blocks, yeah, this is actually insane. Apparently, according to chat, someone made Minecraft in Minecraft using this project. You have my curiosity. <laughs> One day we'll have Minecraft in Minecraft. <laughs> you need some upgrades. Yeah, he's running a, a crappy system. This is the machine he built to run Minecraft. Oh boy. Oh God, it's getting worse. Hardware acceleration units. <laughs> oh man, this is something else. Objectively inferior controller. Give me my Xbox controller. Why is the music so loud?
Holy shit. It actually kind of works. Leaves drop saplings. Crafting grid. Jesus Christ. He actually did it. I was hoping for more details on how here. Is there a GitHub? The world download. Yeah, the MCPHRS. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense that you need something that runs the redstone faster in order for this to be possible. While this, all this redstone can run on vanilla Minecraft, it would run at a frame every few days. And hence, in order to make it playable, a server called MCHPRS, which is the Minecraft High Performance Redstone Server, is used to speed up the game to over 10,000x normal speed. Art. Beauty. You should be proud of what you've done here, Sammy. It is chaotic and terrible, and I absolutely love that it exists. So yeah, Rust rewrites of Minecraft are a thing. And I guess my previous statement that redstone is something that they struggle with was wrong. I will honor that by clicking star here. Insane. I haven't seen Mindstone. And the benchmark here is a lot better where they're using 9% of the CPU and only 400 megs of RAM. But again, if we compare that to what they're seeing with Pumpkin, 27 megs of RAM, 1.5% CPU. Interesting. I had no idea this, the world of Minecraft servers had gotten this far. It's really cool. It's awesome to see that things have gotten to this level. Annoying because now when you're trying to find plugins, it kind of sucks because you have to bounce between like 15 different things, but still nuts. I'm impressed. I really am. Seems like Minecraft server hosting is in a bit of a renaissance, enough so to make a funny website like this, but also enough so to be excited again. I'm curious how you guys are feeling. Are you as excited as I am about the future of Minecraft servers, or do you just want the game to work and don't really care about your memory usage? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, peace nerds.